Hello everybody, this is Jack Askew from Teaching ESL Online and today I have a very special interview. I have Stephen Mayu from ESL Hip Hop. Now Stephen and, Stephen and I have known each other quite a long time now. We've connected online, never met each other in person, but I'm sure it's going to happen someday. We Stephen, welcome. We were very close to meeting each other in person one time. Do you remember that, Jack? Yes, when you were doing your road trip, right? I was, yeah, I was doing a road trip from California to New York, and uh, I was going to pass through North Carolina on the way. Uh, just before North Carolina, I stopped at a diner, and one guy was like, "Ah, oh, no, um, North Carolina, that's like six hours out of your way. you got to just take this uh, shortcut. And, uh, and I remember making the call, and I was like, "Ah, oh, Jack. Uh, I got to take this shortcut. So we never met e in per we never met each other yet, but uh, almost one time earlier last year. So yeah, there's also never another time I think when we were in Connecticut, or we were thinking about going to Conne Connecticut, but we had to oh. cancel our plans last minute. Ended up going to the beach instead in South Carolina. Oh yeah, I do remember that too. And and like who knows, you, you'll probably like visit Japan or Korea in the next year or two, and that'll happen to be the week. That, like I'm off like somewhere in some other country, so I, I feel like it's going to be like a Tom and Jerry sort of situation with us. We're just always chasing each other around. Just always two steps behind the other. Yep, seems to be that way. Um, so, do, do you remember how we first connected online? Uh, I think it was through LinkedIn. I think you, uh, or, or maybe it was through my uh, website, through the email contact form. Um, anyway, you initiate it and. And I remember seeing your profile picture around in JDA English, and I thought, ah, oh, man, this is this is kind of cool. Uh, I've never been uh, contacted by another English teacher before, uh, another blogger. So well, let me see what this guy is about. And um, I believe um, I believe that would have been in uh, 2013, uh, somewhere around that time, like in the middle of the year or the summer. And uh, yeah, we, we, we had a chat on Skype, hit it off. Uh, I remember talking about your son, uh, Thomas. Uh, your wife was uh, still pregnant with, uh, with Thomas. And uh, yeah, had a, a bunch of good laughs on that first call. Yep. Yeah, and it was. I, I decided to reach out to you because you know, I like what you were doing. You are putting yourself out there. Do something very unique as well. And I think I left a comment on your blog and then followed it up with an email. And then... Yeah, we met on Skype and been friends and collaborated on a few things ever since. Yeah, um, so let's talk about your blog, eslhiphop.com. Um, when did you start this and why did you start this blog? Uh, the launch date was April 22nd, uh, 2013. And uh, at the time, I was a teacher at the University of California, Davis. And uh, it was in an intensive English program. So students from all over the world... Um, especially from China, Saudi Arabia, um, uh, Japan, Korea, uh, they would come over and study anywhere from uh, three months to a year to two years. And basically, it was a bridge program. Uh, it's, if international students wanted to study in American universities, uh, but they didn't quite have the English aptitude to do that, uh, they were required by... Uh, by the University of California system to take courses at, at, in our program, and this is you know common uh, across all the country, uh, across you know uh, for for many university campuses, international students um, coming studying for six months to a year in an IEP, and then uh, kind of transitioning to the mainstream uh, college classroom. But at that time, uh, I was doing a lot of academic preparation work, and. Um, you know, a, a lot of my you know hours at work and at home were preparing for these, you know, you know, very essential skills, but kind of boring to me, and and I didn't really like the materials, um, you know, uh, uh, that I was working with. But the the great thing about that job was, um, you know, the elective courses, and in my first sem uh, quarter there, my first semester, um, the the director she let me create my own. Uh, a fun elective, and I said, "Hey, what about hip hop? Um, I've never taught with hip hop, uh, but I really enjoy it." And I kind of came up with a catchy name for it, hip hop as a second language. Please, 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 let me do it. She said, uh, "Okay, um, you know, take it away. Um, it's not for credit or anything. We'll just make it pass fail, and you can do whatever you want to." 
and and I did. So uh, I, I did it for one quarter, and it was a really a lot of fun. The students uh, were getting into it. Um, I had a lot of great experiences, and uh, you know, following the semester, I thought, you know, man, I, I wish I had um, uh, been recording my experiences and and uh, you know wrote about the, the songs I was using. Uh, I wish I had some sort of website or blog, but you know, I, I never. Uh, I never started a blog, so um, so next time I do this course, I'm going to set up a blog, and then uh, everything that I do and use in that class, um, I'll just write about it, um, and, and I'll focus on the vocabulary or grammar. Uh, so that's what I did. Um, about April 2013, uh, uh, figured out WordPress uh, with the help of my friends uh, in, in Texas, uh, the web developers out there. And, uh, and then started blogging away. Uh, got connected on Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn with all of these other teachers. And uh, people really liked it, uh, a lot of teachers. And, and, and I thought, hey, man, this is, this is amazing. I, I, thought, I thought a lot of people wouldn't be you know, uh, feeling it, but I'm getting a lot of positive support out there in the online community. And uh, I just kept going and going and going, uh, very strong for about a year. And uh, once I reached about 100 lessons and, and a few lesson plans, I started scaling back. Uh, nowadays, I don't do so much with it anymore. Uh, maybe one post a, a month or uh, two or three posts a month. Um, but, uh, but it was a really great introduction, and I've met a lot of great people along the way. Great. Fantastic. Um, what, what was the reaction of the students when you first started that class with them, the, the hip-hop as a second language? Well, um, you know, a lot of them, you know, uh, were were very were very shocked by the speed. And you know, at that time, uh, I thought, okay, if I can just use communicative methods um, and just use the best practices, you know, they'll get it, they'll understand. Um, but you know, in the beginning, they they were very you know intimidated by the speed. Um, there was a lot of other considerations I hadn't thought about. Um, uh, you know, in contemporary you know, hip hop music, there's a lot of uh, cultural references, um, references to you know American history and you know what's kind of going on around the time. So that was another very deep layer of meaning you have to kind of uh, get through and, and chop through. Um, and, and then you know also I had to deal with um, you know with sort of uh, social issues that exist in the United States. But may not exist in um, in other countries. Uh, for example, I really love the song "Sound of the Police" by KRS-One, and you know nowadays that that's such a you know relevant song uh, given the you know events in Ferguson, Missouri. Um, but I was playing the song uh, to 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 a class of mostly Japanese learners, and I thought, man, this this is my best lesson yet. It's very easy to understand. The speed is not too fast, uh, but Japanese students they you know they just said, uh, oh, I mean, uh, we have a pretty good relationship and a high level of trust uh, with our with our police force in Japan. So we really can't you know uh, you know get in touch with the KRS One, but but he's got really cool fashion and the the beats sound really uh, really nice. So. Kind of starting off, uh, I made a lot of mistakes, um, but uh, you know the good kind of mistakes that help you grow and, and learn and, and make something better. That's cool. Um, what, what, what kind of songs would you recommend to a teacher wanting to use hip hop in, in their lessons? Uh, I always say uh, a good rule of thumb is to, um, is to go back in time to the uh, uh, old school hip hop era. Um, so it, if, you, if you think about guys like MC Hammer, um, uh, it, it, if you think about the, maybe the Beastie Boys, uh, uh, you know guys like this, um, then then you know they they tend to rhyme like very slowly. The language is actually um, standard American English. There's not a lot of um, uh, you know um, like a, like dialects or, or variations of English. It's actually pretty straightforward grammar and vocabulary usage. This kind of sets you a rhythm. Um, you know, Will Smith and DJ uh, Jazzy Jeff um, were really good at this too. Um, so, so my recommendation is to go you know really back in time to the late 80s, early 90s. Um, there's a ton of great uh, selection for hip hop for your classes. If there's a contemporary uh, song that you like, 
um, you know, nowadays they write really quickly, and the the language is uh, is very impressively, um, you know, crafted. It's almost like poetry. May not be appropriate for your for your students, but I, I recommend using the chorus or or the hook. Usually, that's very repetitive. It's much slower and uh, and uh, uses you know, fairly standard language. So um, you know you can do that. Another option is just using the music, just searching for the instrumental version of the song on YouTube and just using that for setting the mood in your class, for, uh, for, for speaking activities, uh, especially for stress rhythm and intonation. I love just using hip-hop instrumentals. It makes it fun and, and kind of funky and, and uh, you, you, can, you can do many things with it, like a jazz chant or, or a hip-hop freestyle, uh, so to speak. <clears throat> Well, that's really interesting. Um, have you used these methods online with students? Uh, it's sometimes uh, it, it's it's kind of hard to uh, uh, to to do it online because even with the best connection, there's there might be that little tiny bit of of drag or or delay, and um, it, you know, hip hop. In music, especially, it just really depends on on being present uh, when the music is playing, and and uh, when you're teaching something like stress and rhythm, um, you know, having you know your your actions and the sounds occur in real time and without there being any delay, uh, that that's super important. Uh, I've tried it a few times. Um, uh, with for students within the United States, and that doesn't seem to be a problem. Whenever I work with students, uh, you know, uh, in other countries, uh, perhaps like Brazil or or in Saudi Arabia or in Russia, uh, the, the the connections are not as strong as I would like them to be. So. Um, so I, I may not uh, use those kind of methods with them, but for a group of students in the class in the same room with you, um, they, they work wonderfully. Um, but I have had you know positive experiences, and and I uh, did a really fun presentation with the students at the um, at the, what is it Southern Utah University, their intensive English program, and uh, we did a. Um, uh, we did the several activities with the with the music, and we even did the uh, kind of like stress and, and rhythm, uh, clapping along, and, and that worked out really well. Um, so I'd say as long as the connection, the broadband's there, it, it works great. If not, you kind of have to get creative and, and do something else uh, with the music. Yeah, I actually remember I was in one of your lessons in in Wiz IQ and. You were talking about how you used hip hop in the classroom, and you went through a lesson, um, mm -hmm. and you were using you know that stress and the rhythm and the clapping, and it was you know very very engaging, you know for someone who knows English anyway, you know but for the just to be in that kind of classroom, it was really engaging. Yeah, KRS One, he said, uh, hip hop is intelligent movement. Hip. Uh, that needs to be cool, to be updated, and to be relevant. And then hop, that's like the physical action. So you know, to me, uh, hip hop, w without any sort of moving, without even bouncing your head a little bit, it just seems uh, very strange. So so I always like to you know make a hip hop uh, classroom very physical, getting the students to stand up, walking around, getting them to 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 be comfortable enough to kind of dance or or sway around a little bit, and uh, you, you know you have to make it really engaging and fun uh, when you're using you know such interesting materials like hip hop. Right. Um, now, last question about hip hop in in the classroom. Have mm -hmm. you received any backlash from teachers using this method? Because it's you know it's a little bit obviously a little bit different to what uh, a traditional class is like. Have you received backlash and have you responded to that? If you I mean. I I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily say backlash. Um, uh, at one point during my career at at, the, at UC Davis, um, you know, I had my uh, blog set up, and for some uh, assignments, I had students go onto the blog and to to comment on some of the posts. Um, and and I think a couple of teachers voiced concern that the, the students from uh, countries such, such as you know Saudi Arabia and China that it, you know if they return to their country and some authority found out their their digital signature on my site with, with their comments about some you know uh, topic that was taboo over there they were concerned that you know they could 
um, be uh, they could have been you know thrown into the slammer or something like that. Um, nothing, no sort of thing ever happened. Um, but but that was one example, not of the you know backlash, but uh, but like a, an area of concern that uh, a couple of my colleagues brought up. Um, you know, fair point, but um, but maybe a little bit too cautious. I felt um, in the beginning. Um, uh, especially during my time at UC Davis, uh, I was doing a lot of conference presentations and, and talking about my elective, and uh, I didn't necessarily get backlash, but a lot of the, you know, veteran, um, you know, tenure teachers thought it was kind of a fun, sort of like silly thing. They, they didn't think it was like um, that in, important. But you, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to be, you know, Rod Ellis. I'm, I'm not trying to write a book on. You know, some groundbreaking theory of second language acquisition. I mean, my main goal of, of using hip hop, hip -hop was uh, it, it just transforming the setting at my school, making it you know fun and, and really interesting, so my students were motivated, and, and so that they can do you know their assignments w with a bit more enjoyment. So uh, yeah, I, I wish you know more of the uh, more of my colleagues in the university setting. Uh, I wish they could have uh, taken me, you know, more seriously. Yeah, they didn't, but you know, in hip hop, we say haters gonna hate. So, hate on. <laughs> there we go. Great yeah. answer. Um, let's move on. So, wh what are you doing at the moment? And you know, do you have anything brewing? I'm asking this question because I know there is something brewing at the moment. Yeah. Well, uh, at the moment, um, uh, uh, I'm teaching English to adults in uh, in South Korea in uh, Busan. It's a beautiful city right on the southern coast, um, and uh, it's for it's for a, a private academy. It's uh, it's owned by uh, Pearson Education. It's really great because uh, Korea is historically has has had this um, drill and kill um, sort of. Uh, education system for foreign languages, especially for English. Um, I really appreciate this uh, school uh, because the focus is on, um, you know, a conversation, genuine communication, and uh, we're trying to get rid of the old uh, studying habits uh, uh, over here in Korea. So I'm, I'm really loving it. And uh, I do have something brewing, uh, uh, cooking up, inspired by you actually. Um, I've making a video course uh, for Korean students and this course is going to prepare them for a, a speaking proficiency test called the OPIC, the Oral Proficiency Interview by Computer. This is a proficiency test by ACTFL, uh, that's the American uh, Council on the Teaching of Foreign Languages. Um, it, it's um, it's not a very popular test worldwide. It's not like a TOEFL or, or IELTS, um, but this is a, a very um, underserved um, you know, group of people, I think, in Korea, and this is a very high-stakes test for them. So I, I'm just really excited to put in a lot of hours of hard work and, and to offer something you know, useful and, and, and something with a lot of value. Great. And how have you found the process? Of creating a course, you know, both the content, thinking about the marketing side of things, they obviously have to build a website too. How's that process been for you? Man, it's exhausting. I mean, there's everything to think about. You're right, and um, you know, you said it in your teach on uh, teaching English online course. You can't do this alone. You, you got to ask for help. Um, but uh, uh, but but the, the the process has been uh, it's been so much fun. I've been learning something every day. Um, every skill that that's needed is, is getting sharpened. Um, you know my technical skills, working with WordPress and and going into the CSS and, and kind of digging and hacking around. Uh, that's getting better and better. Um, you're thinking you know more intelligently about marketing and, and how I can optimize my site for you know search engines and. And, and social media that that's always kind of run in the back of my head and um, and also just listening to my students listening to their concerns and what they really want and uh, just trying to the you know deliver that into a, a beautiful website that that's responsive and, and, and works uh, seamlessly um, you, that you know it, it's a lot of work but um, but the process has been it, it's been great it, it, and you know, there's very few jobs that I've done where you know I can just work late into the night until like 4 a.m. and like I'm happy to do it and, and, and like I'm upset by my physical 
like uh, limitations, like, oh, I really need to get some sleep. I really need to stop to eat because my body needs calories to, to keep operating. Uh, there are very few projects I've done that, that just keeps me like wanting to go, 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 like, kind of like a zombie. I'm, I'm sort of like an internet course zombie right now. Zombie needs brains. Uh, I need, I just need content and pages uh, to get set up. So but right now I'm, I'm just like I'm a zombie. I'm just going <laughs> to eat it all up. I know exactly what you mean. Um, yeah. It's it's like a, a true focus, you know, when you have that kind of big goal and a big project to work on. And I don't know if you've set yourself a deadline for this, but, you know, when I when I created my two courses, I set myself a deadline. Mm -hmm. And the weeks running up to it, it was just one track mind, just get this done to the best of my ability and to get it out there. And uh, you are just completely engrossed in, in this project. Yeah, I, I mean, it's hard to think about anything else. And uh, uh, you know, every free second that I can get at work um, uh, during my lunch hour, just, um, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I can use this time, you know, right now to, to do something for this course. The time on the subway, it's like reading um, and, and catching up on articles for research. Uh, so, so, so it's, you, you know, working on, on a course like this, you know, has made me, you know, more mindful about, you know, managing, managing my time and, uh, and, and, um, and, and using every second of the day to make it count. Um, so, uh, you know, so, so everything is just, you know, come, coming coming full, you know, full focus, you know, and come into light, and um, it has to be addressed. So, um, so by the end of this, um, I think I'm going to be a much better entrepreneur, much better online teacher, writer, uh, web developer, uh, much better at everything. That's really cool. Yeah, you know, seeing it as a learning process as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I find as well, if you try to detach yourself from the results as much as possible and just focus on the process, mm -hmm. then, yeah, you, you get so much out of it that way. Mm -hmm. um, have you outsourced any of the work to anyone? Uh, a, a little bit. Um, well, uh, I've I started uh, working with a, um, with a freelance marketer uh, just uh, for a couple of hours. Um, uh, found her on uh, Elance and, and so far it's been it's been you know a very helpful um, I'm very new to marketing and it's always been something that intimidated me and um, I'm always up for learning something but this is sort of like an area that I would have to spend you know uh, maybe 10 or 20 hours just to get down to basics so uh, just working with somebody uh, who can do the same amount of work in like two hours is, is really helpful. And uh, and I meet with her on Skype, you know, weekly, and and I ask her to kind of talk about her work and her process. So even though she's doing all the grunt work and and uh, and all the research uh, that, that I need, I'm also learning a lot from her. Um, so so in the future, whenever I need um, to do any marketing, I kind of have um, these. Uh, in flight questions that I'm working with and, and sort of these uh, uh, best practices, that this operating procedure. Um, so I don't always have to, you know, rely on her. Um, so, but just, you know, meeting with her, uh, it, it, I, I learn a lot and she kind of takes care of a lot of, uh, you know, um, I won't say mundane, but a lot of these uh, tasks that were just required, you know, hours, that's out of my hands onto hers. And I can just focus uh, what's, you know, very important, the content of the course. Content's going to be killer, so give the other work to somebody else. Yeah, yeah, I think it's important to to you know be aware of um, your capabilities, and there are two you know types of tasks. Maybe it's your skill level isn't high enough to really um, do that justice, or the other one is the the mundane tasks. Now, one yeah. of the tasks that I outsourced was the transcripts for the videos. Um, yeah, started work on it. I had like 50, 60 videos. And I mm -hmm. knew it was going to take me hours and hours and hours and hours of just, uh, you know, stopping the video, writing out the transcripts and learning a new skill as well, which I didn't really want to, to pick up. So I was very happy to, to outsource something like that. Yeah, yeah. So um, for me, you know, Elance has been you know, very helpful. I know there's uh, other websites out there. I like the Elance because there's the uh, work view feature. And so... Um, uh, you, your 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 freelancer uh, when they log in, um, the the WorkView system will randomly take screenshots uh, of whatever they happen to be on, and so um, you can kind of like get a little peek over their shoulder just to make sure they're they're not running the clock. Um, but um, 
but, but they also have a great rating system. So um, even if that viewing feature didn't exist, um, you're very likely to find somebody who's, uh, who's uh, you know, professional and, and uh, hardworking. Great. Um, so let's move on to our final area of discussion, that's social media. Yep. Um, what channels are you using and getting a lot of traction out of at the moment? Well, um, the mostly uh, mostly Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, I do very well in there. Um, Twitter, uh, you know, I don't really um, I don't really use it uh, too much, but I, I I do have a success story out of Twitter. Um, but uh, a lot of people they they, they just uh, they don't get LinkedIn or you know uh, they always wonder well, what's the purpose of LinkedIn? They're trying to be like some professional Facebook, but uh, I absolutely love it, and I've got a lot of people, um, uh, you know, uh, following me on there and, uh, and, and talking to, uh, I met some wonderful people um, on LinkedIn so far, so, um, you know, it, it's, it's been great. And how, how do you use LinkedIn? Do you use it for connections to publicize something? Well, uh, yeah, I do. Um, I do post, uh, you know, uh, achievements or guest blogs or um, blogs on my uh, own page or updates about projects um, as a status update at, uh, in LinkedIn. Um, I use it to uh, just to just you know get connected, get in touch with people who are in my area. So uh, other teachers in Korea and Japan who also have an interest in. Educational entrepreneurship. Um, you know, I'll make a connection with them. Um, you know, send them a short a message and chat. Uh, and you know, sometimes that gets the ball rolling um, for a potential partnership. Um, so sometimes people will just um, kind of send me a, a cold uh, message, uh, just out of the blue. Um, maybe maybe it turns into uh, nothing. Um, but you know, one of these messages uh, turned out to, to to be the beginning of a really good uh, relationship, and that's uh, Giovanni Rotora from uh, Gallery Languages, uh, based in uh, Oxford, uh, England, and uh, he's he's been such a great guy, um, uh, Italian guy, so uh, super friendly. Uh, we work on a lot of uh, you know blog posts and uh, and, and different projects. Um, last summer, I made. Uh, over a hundred videos for him, uh, 15 second English lessons, um, and that was a lot of fun, uh, that process of making all these uh, videos. Um, he flew me out to Tunisia um, uh, early last year um, uh, for, for a conference. Uh, so, you know, in my experience uh, using LinkedIn, it, it turns into, you know, real solid uh, professional uh, you know, uh, connections, and it's not just like another Facebook. Um, I, I think it's even you know better than Facebook in, in some regard. Um, you know, Facebook, everybody's promoting their stuff, and you know that's that's kind of a great thing. Uh, but sometimes the uh, you know your voice can be lost because uh, there's just so much out there and there's just so much noise. Uh, LinkedIn kind of cuts through that. It's it's more. Um, it's it's more like uh, networking focused and, uh, and and, to, and meeting people that can you know do some serious work with you. Yeah, it definitely is. You know, it's about connections, isn't it? LinkedIn. That's the whole idea of of the platform: introducing exactly. people to other people, connecting with with others, and it's that that's the focus of that platform. I yeah. just say, you know, Facebook is it's very noisy, especially over the last year. I found it to be very very noisy. Um, yeah, and, and uh, stuff out there. It, it's uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I I've kind of made a mistake, and I uh, I combine my personal and like professional lives into a single Facebook account, and uh, and like just last week, uh, I just I went through everything and uh, I kind of uh, muted some pages and turned off some notifications, and it, it's something you gotta do. Um, uh, so you know, I recommend that to everybody. But the, there's still like a, a circle of people that you know, no matter what. Uh, I'll always um, like their page or, or share their, uh, their their new post. Uh, yours included, of course. Um, but uh, but you know nowadays I feel like yeah, everybody's got a Facebook page and and you know they're promoting and uh, man it's just uh, chaos. And Twitter's a little bit like that too um, at, at times. So that's why I don't get into it um, as much as LinkedIn. But um, uh, but you know. The, you know, all they're all very valuable tools, and they each have their own like uh, nuances um, uh, uh, in order to you know 
being like a, to, in order to have like a really you know, good presence. Great. Um, well, Stephen, thank you so much for your for your time today, and we wish you the best for your new course, which is very exciting, and hopefully you can keep us updated with how that how that goes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I've got an ambitious start date, um, especially considering this month is uh, is very short. Um, but I, I'd like to you know, launch this um, on uh, on March fourteenth. Um, uh, Fantastic. I, I'd like I'd like to do it on the fifteenth, but that that seems a, a little too. Um, it sounds like a bad idea to me. So, um, the Ides of March, of course. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, kind of stupid, but uh, yeah. So March fourteenth, that's going to be kind of my uh, unofficial slash official uh, start date. And, well, it's official uh, now. Yeah, it's official now. All right. Yeah, March fourteenth. Check it out. It's uh, it's going to be great. And uh, yeah, just uh, you know, follow me. I'll keep you posted on the progress. And uh, and uh, it's just going to get better with uh, you know uh, continual updates and, and upgrades. Uh, but the uh, first version out March fourteenth. There. What, what day of the week is that? I don't even know what 14th um, is. Yeah, um, you might yeah. want to check that in case it's yeah. like a Saturday or something. But yeah, that's a um, good idea. All right. No, I, having that really good deadline, it's just mm -hmm. um, it's going to get you focused and just get it out there. And now you've made it official. Yeah. You've you've got um, you know no reason to not do that. Okay, so hold me to that deadline. Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn yeah. and Google. You got to hold me. It's just yeah. Time me up. Ah! Um, where can people find you best? What, what? Uh, best way to find me is eslhiphop.com. If you uh, want to send me an email, just go to the contact form uh, and shoot me a message there. I uh, usually respond within uh, 48 hours, so uh, that's the best way to reach me. Um, you can uh, follow my page on Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, Google+. So all the links are on my blog at eslhiphop.com. And, um, and, and very soon um, uh, I'll be announcing uh, the, the title of the course and where you can find it and all that good information. It will be in the Korean language, so I don't know how relevant that will be to uh, a, a lot of the, uh, the people watching this video. But if you want to check it out and uh, just see you know, how I've laid out everything, uh, yeah, uh, go for it. And you, know, you can always reach out to me and, and ask about my experience of making an uh, internet video course. Great. I'll um I'll put all those links under the, under this video, and okay. then once your course is launched, I'll have a little update there too for for people. So if you know if you're watching this after March the 14th or 15th, whichever date mm -hmm. it is, um you should be able to see that link there. Sounds great. great. Well, thanks again for your time, Stephen. It's been really valuable, and um we'll speak soon. Yeah. All right. Take care, man. Okay then. Bye bye. Bye bye. Stephen Mayu from ESLHipHop.com. Now I've hey, known... what's up, guys? <laughs> hey, how's it going, Stephen? <laughs> we'll start again. All right, yes. <laughs> yeah.